as you can see, it is a beautiful, sunshine-filled morning on Star Lake and in the curmudgeon's hot tub this morning. <clears throat> I've, uh, I've noticed I get a hell of a lot more views from y'all out there. Oh, uh, speaking of, like, who are you? Like, 57 views on that mind-body thing and... Uh, 50 some views on Georgina uh, who are you who's listening to this thing I, I really would like to know uh, if it you know if it's the same person who has a crush on me and just watches the same video over and over again just because you know uh, unex unrequited love well let me know I'll buy you some chocolates and send you some flowers hell's bells you deserve it uh, but if like there's actually 50 different people out there, damn, I'd like to know who are you? Why are you watching this? All right, at any rate, I noticed that I get a lot more views on the things that uh, are more general to human nature instead of uh, specific uh, stories about stuff that's happened to me. But by God, today, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get the journey of a pretty ordinary white guy, entitled white guy's uh, experiences with um, homosexuality, the gay life. Well, all right. So first off, I didn't know this when I was in high school, but we had a gay guy going to our high school that was just the sweetest, most wonderful human being on the planet. Nice, nice guy. And... I didn't know it, and I guess he's dead now, and I suspect that he died of what uh, way too many young gay guys did die of in the 70s and 80s, and you, you, I just so much wish that I'd had the consciousness, the awareness, the knowledge that I could have reached out to him in high school and been a, a, the kind of friend that a gay guy in a little eastern Washington town needed. I wish I could have. Well, all right. So then, uh, about three years later, I'm living in Tacoma, and uh, the guy who lived in the apartment building down street, downstairs invites me to supper. And so we're sitting waiting for his buddy to show up. And once his buddy walks in the door, it is very clear that these two guys are gay, I mean, they like drop it on me like a ton of bricks. And I'm starting to worry that maybe I'm the after dinner entertainment. Uh, now, fortunately, I remembered that I was supposed to be babysitting my little boy Damon that night. And so they could see that my uh, panic about forgetting that important obligation was legitimate. And so I excused myself and. I never went to dinner there again. I was, you know, I was pretty homophobic anyway. So then uh, if you've listened to any of my other videos, you know that I used to create these weekends where I would invite gay folk and lesbians to sit down for a weekend with uh, Mormons and Christian fundamentalists. And I pretty much lost most of my Mormon friends and picked up uh, several gay friends. and. I even went uh, backpacking with uh, a man who is now one of my absolute best friends, a tall, gay black man, wonderful human being, really good looking too. And um, so uh, two weekends ago, I was at this uh, big uh, thing and uh, a whole bunch of us men were naked and we're all holding hands to kind of guide each other as we walk in the dark uh, with our eyes closed, can't see, and it's cold as hell. And to give you an idea of how far I've come from my homophobia, the guy next to me in line, I knew, it felt like I knew him, and so I kept trying to pull him a little bit closer so we keep each other warm. And boy, he wasn't having any of it. And a few days later, it occurred to me, you know, little men, probably a uh, little straight men, probably are not all that uh, crazy about snuggling up to large men. 
and yeah, he did keep pulling away from me, and I kept thinking, well, damn it, why couldn't I have ended up next to a uh, gay guy so we could keep each other warm? Well, anyway, so I'm telling you, I'm sympathetic to that little guy's uh, feelings, which I don't think I would have been before. I wouldn't have understood it. I sure, you know, you know, 20 years ago, I would not have uh, pulled, tried to pull him in closer so we could keep each other warm. Um, I once uh, created this uh, party. Uh, we, we created a bunch of weird shit weekends and a couple of uh, interesting parties. And one of these parties was that you had to RSVP 60 days in advance. And then you would come and perform something that you'd always wanted to. And so I performed a tango and I sang uh, a solo. So um, a lot of people did dances and a few people read uh, from a novel that they'd been working on, etc. So this one gay guy, I guess, had never dressed up in women's clothing and he always wanted to. So he, um, you know, all it was was he standing there in a dress and a couple of people who loved him come up and stand around him. And I don't know, I'm sorry to say that it was the sappiest, stupidest thing I'd ever seen. But, you know, that's what he wanted. And I'd created the party and he was welcome to do it. Now, it turned out the next day, uh, we're cleaning up after the party. And the head of the Boy Scouts, uh, the local executive of the Boy Scouts, uh, confronts me about, uh, God damn it, you're holding a party here in the Boy Scout Center with gay guys dressed up as women? Are you trying to get me fired, Kirk? I apologize profusely. No, that's I, I had no idea that that was what was going to happen. Turned out he got himself fired for uh, dipping into the cash. Well, okay, so um, that's been my journey, and I would say that uh, I'm not very homophobic anymore. And now, then I got somebody that's quite close to me who is, um, how do I say, he's not, he, he's uh, opposed to the whole gender polarity thing. I gotta tell you, like 10 years ago, what the, I had no idea what the hell, but I kinda get it now. It's like, okay, uh, let's stop focusing on gender polarity and let's find some other way of being whoever we are instead of being so hard over on the polarity of masculine and feminine. And I don't know what the hell that is, but okay. Part of it is, see, that I like the feel of a woman's skin and hair. It's softer. And my wife apparently likes the feel of a man's skin and hair. It's rougher, thicker. Well, what the hell are you going to do with that? There's a, there's a certain polarity there. Now, for people who are find both kinds of skin, both kinds of hair erogenous, well, damn it, they should be honored. I agree with that. Uh, cut them some slack. But um, how do we explore this area of what is it to be masculine? For a long time, I've entertained the possibility that you ask a little boy, what does it mean to be a boy? And they'll, they'll almost to a person tell you that what it means to be a boy is to not be a girl, not be girlish. So I'm gonna call that a referential identity. It's an identity that refers to something else to tell you who you are. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a pathetic, identity for males and I think you'll notice that for most uh, straight males and for a lot of gay males who don't want to admit that they're gay uh, it's horrifying to them that a man would move over into the girly category hell even the gay guys refer to some of the gay guys as Nellies and Nancy boys well so, there's got to be a better definition for 
what it means to be male other than not girly, not female. Or does there? Does there have to be any better definition? Um, you know, I think we all go back and look at this thing I did on force and power. Get in touch with power moving through you, coming from inside you. Get in touch with that inside you that is indestructible and eternal. And I don't know that it has a gender, whatever that thing is. Uh, it could be just random, purely accidental that you got an XY chromosome and you got an XX chromosome may not mean a damn thing in terms of that sense of the eternal you. Maybe we can give up on the gender polarity thing. Sure would like to hear from all you people out there.